Today in this video, we will be talking about color space and how color space works for digital images. Coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Ming. Welcome to another video. If you are new to my channel, please check out more information in the description below. And if you are interested in Lumina 4, you can use coupon code MING during checkout to save $10. If you are interested in Capture One 20, you can use the link in the description to get a 30-day free trial. And after the free trial, if you want to continue, please consider using code MING during checkout to support my channel. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the video. So color space, what is color space? I'm gonna try to explain color space in a very simple way. Color space is a certain range of colors that are available to be used in a photo. sRGB is a smaller color space, which means it has a smaller range of colors that are available to you. And Adobe RGB, on the other hand, provides a wider range of colors that are available to you. However, don't get confused with the number of colors in a photo. The number of colors in a photo is not determined by the color space. The number of colors in a photo is determined by the number of bits in a photo. Here is an example. An 8-bit JPEG file can contain up to approximately 16.7 million different colors no matter which color space you use, either sRGB or Adobe RGB. It really doesn't matter. Here is why. A bit is binary. It is either 0 or 1. So a single bit can represent two different values. If we have two bits, then we can represent four different values. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, or 1, 1. So we can have four different values. If we have three bits, then we can represent eight different values. If we have four bits, then we can represent 16 different values. When it goes to eight bits, then we can represent 256 different values. And since both the sRGB and Adobe RGB are RGB color space, which means each color channel, R for the red channel, G for the green channel, and a B for the blue channel, each channel has a bit, which means each color channel can represent 256 different values. Therefore, a color photo that contains three color channels can have 256 times 256 times 256, which is approximately 16.7 million different colors in the photo, no matter which color space you use. All right, now we know the number of colors in the photo. The question is, what are those colors? That's when the color space comes in. Now I'm inside of Photoshop and I'm going to show you an example. This is a 800 pixel by 800 pixel 8-bit file. And I'm going to the color picker tool. And like I mentioned earlier, each channel has 256 different values starting with zero. So I can enter something from zero to 255. I'm going to enter 160 for the red channel and 250 for the green channel and then 150 for the blue channel. The question is, these are just the numbers. How these numbers become this particular color? That's where the color space comes in. A color space maps this value to a particular color. I'm going to click on OK and then fill this empty canvas with that particular color. Now I can go to edit and assign profile and I can show you that the current color space I'm using is Adobe RGB. So Adobe RGB color space maps that particular value 160, 250, and 150 to this particular color. What if I change this color space to sRGB? A different color space maps the same value to a different color. So as you can see, I can unche uncheck preview box. So this is the Adobe RGB color and this is the sRGB color. Adobe RGB, sRGB. So the color changed slightly. I'm going to click on OK and now I'm going to use the color picker tool. Grab this color and if we look at the value, it is still 160, 250 and 150. 150. The value didn't change, but then the color changed slightly because we used a different mapping system. We used a different color space. Now I'm going to start over again. 
So first, go to Edit, go to Assign Profile, make sure I'm currently working with Adobe RGB Color Space. And then go to Color Picker tool, and make sure the value is 160, 250, and 150. Click on OK, and then I'm going to fill my canvas with that particular color. Now this time, instead of assign uh, sRGB to this file, I'm going to convert this particular color from Adobe RGB to sRGB. And as you can see this time, if I check or uncheck this preview box, as you can see, the color doesn't change. I'm gonna click on OK, and then use the color picker tool, grab this color, and then let's check this value. The color this time doesn't change, but then this RGB value actually changed. So that means uh, the same color in Adobe RGB color space is mapped to 160, 250, and 150. And in this sRGB color space, it is mapped to 97, 250, and 145. It is just like a different mapping system. However, you can't convert all colors from Adobe RGB to sRGB. For example, let's go back to Adobe RGB first. And this time I'm going to change the value to 0 for R channel and 255 for G channel and 0 for B channel. And then click on OK and then fill the canvas with that color. All right, so this is the green color in Adobe RGB color space. And now I'm going to go to edit, go to convert to profile, and I'm going to select sRGB. And if I check preview, you can see the color changed. Even though I'm trying to convert the color to sRGB color. This is Adobe RGB color space. This is sRGB color space. Adobe RGB, sRGB. The color changed because this color is only available in Adobe RGB color space, but not available in sRGB color space. So when trying to convert this particular color from Adobe RGB to sRGB, it can only find the most similar color in sRGB color space. sRGB is a smaller color space compared to Adobe RGB, which means that there are some colors only available in Adobe RGB color space, but not available in sRGB color space. When converting those colors from Adobe RGB to sRGB, you would see a color change. On the other side, if you are converting from sRGB to Adobe RGB, because Adobe RGB is a wider range, therefore you won't see any color change when converting colors from sRGB to Adobe RGB. All right guys, so now I hope you have a better understanding of how color space works. Next time, I'm gonna talk about my color space setting in my camera and in my software, such as Lightroom, Capture One, and Photoshop. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like it, please click on the thumbs up button below and consider to share this video with your friends. And if you are the first time on my channel, please consider subscribing as well. Again, if you are interested in Lumina 4, you can use coupon code MING during checkout to save $10. And if you are interested in Capture 120, please check out the links in the description below. All right, guys, hope you enjoy photography. Until next time. Bye for now.